even though this doesn't seem so likely at the moment, a big crisis can occur any time that could lead to the Third World War. Using nuclear weapons doesn't seem so far-fetched, and there are many people who try to prepare for a catastrophe like this. If you don't feel safe, there are a couple of things you can prepare already, but during an attack, there are many things you have to watch out for. Here are tips on how to survive a nuclear explosion. The Preparation 1. Have a plan The most important thing in regards to surviving definitely is having a plan beforehand. You have to be prepared, because once shit hits the fan, every unexpected move can harm and might endanger your life. Also, it's often way too late to start searching for food or making your way to the next shelter. So, set up an escape plan that'll allow you to quickly get to the shelter, where you can stay for at least 48 hours. Number 2. Build up stocks When you start to stockpile, make sure you don't just have enough fresh goods. Non-perishable goods are the alpha and the omega to surviving. Pick food with plenty of carbohydrates, because they fill you up for longer. This includes rice, wheat, beans, noodles and also dried fruits, which you should try to keep in a cool, dry place. Some tin food doesn't harm either, but don't forget the tin opener. And of course, you should take care of plenty of drinking water. Number 3. Have medicine ready All the food goes to waste if you die of a measly cold, so you should definitely have a stock of medicine with you. This includes a first aid kit with sterile bandages and plasters, as well as disinfectants, gloves, a thermometer and so forth. If you need to take special medication, you should definitely have it on supply, as well as typical medicine like headache, stomach or anti-infection tablets. If you're unsure whether you'd be able to treat wounds in the worst case or not, you should bring a good first aid book along with you too. And number four, other things that could be useful. Apart from medicine, food and drink, there are some other things that you should have with you for the worst case. So this means a torch with enough batteries, a dust mask, as well as plenty of sticky tape, because you can always do with that. Dustbin bags, plastic binders and also toilet paper are practical concerning personal hygiene. You should bring along some tools too. A screw wrench and a pair of pincers are the most important because you can turn off the gas and water supply if need be. You shouldn't underestimate the importance of means of communication. A radio should be nearby, ETV in the very best case, to keep track of the breaking news optically too. You should also have a mobile phone and a whistle ready just in case. The very survival. 1. The explosion itself. It's time, and you have to face the danger. As soon as you hear the alarm or warn signal, look for shelter right away, because that's your only chance to survive. The actual harmful radius depends on the size of the bomb, the height of the detonation, as well as the weather, but your survival rate above a bunker is nil. If you don't find shelter, then look for a hollow and lie inside head first. Cover as much of your skin as possible. If you don't find a hollow, then dig like crazy, because the enormous heat will burn you alive. Number 2. Beware of radiation If you've survived the attack, think of the following radiation that could kill you. The explosion mostly causes radioactive condensation that also brings along dangerous radiation. The so-called fallout can come down as black soot, also known as black rain. It can be extremely hot and deadly because it contaminates everything it touches. So it's best not to go out at all, as long as you can see this phenomenon. 3. Safety and shelter if you've survived all of this so far, you should be prepared to spend at least 200 hours in your shelter. Under no circumstances should you go out during the first 48 hours. The reason for this is the fission products that are present after a nuclear explosion. They reduce over time, but this can take very, very long. These materials are transported hundreds of miles through the air, so even big distance to the scene doesn't help. Number 4. Keep acting carefully. If you have to go out at some point, then always be fully dressed. The best is to wear an air impermeable suit. That's how you avoid burns and the contact with the radioactive contaminated particles. When you return to your shelter, you'll have to decontaminate your clothing and wash yourself thoroughly with water. And number five, be informed. The most important thing about surviving is to be well informed. Even before the attack, you should do some research, like look up the difference between nuclear and hydrogen bombs or how to protect yourself from alpha, beta and gamma rays. This information will help you more in emergencies than some of the equipment will, or they'll even help you pack the right equipment. 
Also, you should try to keep up to date and get to know the state of things with help of your available means of communication. Gee, that sure was a cheerful topic, but what do you think? Will the Third World War start in 10, 20, 30 years? Let us know your opinion in the comment section, even if it's just speculation. You can also give us the thumbs up and as always, we'll see you next time. Stay well and peace out!